Hey guys, welcome back to the van build series. We're up to episode nine now, and this episode's gonna cover the electrical rough in. So I'm gonna start wiring up everything in this van before I do the cabinetry and sheet everything. So most of the stuff in this van is gonna be ran off 12 volt DC. So things like the fridge, the lights, the hot water system, and various other things. I will need 240 volt AC as well as for like power points, laptop, battery charges, camera charges and other things like that. So I'll have the mix between them both. So this van is going to be designed to be completely off the grid, ran by just solar panels and battery storage. But I will also have the option to plug into the grid into mains if I want to. So I just want to keep the electrical in this van pretty simple and I don't want to make it too complicated and run you know, all these wires that I don't need. I will run a few extra wires here and there um, that I won't hook up just for future in case I want to add an appliance later on or something like that. So yeah, as you guys might know by now, um, I'm in Australia, so the laws that govern electrical in Australia are AS3000 and in particular for caravans and motorhomes it's AS3001. So you'll know about all this stuff if you're an electrician in Australia or New Zealand. Um, but you probably won't know about these books if you are an electrician. So in saying that, if you're not an electrician, I probably would not recommend you to do this. I would get like a licensed electrician to do this. That way you can know that the system's been installed and designed properly and it's all safe and tested. So yeah, this will be the first part of the electrical section. There'll be part two, which will be fitting off all the appliances and wiring it all up. And down the track, once the van's been completed, I will run some real life tests and show you how much current uh, things are drawing and how the batteries are performing, solar and all those things. I'll do those videos like down the track when the van's been done. So in terms of what cable I'm using to wire this van, here I've got 2.5mm twin in earth which I'll be using to wire all my 240 volt connections and on my left I've got 4mm twin which I'll be using to wire nearly all my 12 volt connections. I've also got 25 mil Coro here, which I'll definitely be enclosing all this 240 cable in. As for the 12 volt, it's not as crucial to enclose this in Coro. Where I can, I will, but it's not as crucial to do that. So firstly, I drilled some holes to run the cables from the left to the right side of the van. Next, I measured off the cables going from the AC switchboard down to the 15 amp inlet and also the charge controlling area. And I'm connecting my cables to a tongue so it's easier to push through the coro.
now I'm just running my solar cables down to where the isolator is going to be. Next, I'm going to reroute all the existing van wiring inside the cavity walls. So now I'm just measuring off the coro that's going to enclose the tank gauge cables. Once I pulled up the tank gauge cables inside the van, I'm going to run down the 12 volt pump cable. I just terminated the pump cable into BP connectors uh, and then just zippy tied it up. Now I'm just going to run the hot water system and the pump circuit back to this DC switchboard. The hot water system and the toilet are on the same circuit, so it just comes from the switchboard and it loops down at the hot water system and then it goes over to the toilet where the circuit ends. Next I'm going to measure up and mark the 15 amp inlet and the 10 amp outlet on the external of the van. Once marked I tested that they would fit correctly and cut them out with a jigsaw. Then filed the bird edges and painted the edges with rust protecting paint. I split each circuit into a separate 20mm coro which comes from a larger 25mm coro. 
I then stripped and twisted the cables and terminated each wire in its dedicated termination. I twisted and lugged the 6 mil earth, then I grinded some of the paint off the van so that when I bolt the earth to the chassis, it makes a really good connection. I then stick a flexed around the coro so that it can't come out and it can't move. And now I'm just running the two cat 6 cables, which I'll use for a future reverse camera if I put one in. This is the 25mm XLPE flex cable and it's running from the van starter battery back to the back of the van to the charger DC to DC controller so that when I'm driving, I can charge the house battery off the alternator. This is the 4mm twin cable for the 12 volt socket outlet above bench in the kitchen. So now I'm running the power outlet in the back door, the 12 volt one, and the back door lights. So I had to strip them back to bare cable and I couldn't fit three 4mm twins in the coro that you can see there. So I had to do a solder join just before it goes to the coro for the back door lights. And then from this solder join, I just run a cable over to the other side, the other back door light. So now I'm running the 12 volt lights in the roof and I just drilled a little hole in the side and secured the cable with a bit of coro and sicker flex so that it's not going to get damaged from sharp edges.
So now I'm just running the cable for the 240 volt power point above bench in the kitchen. So next I'm running two solar isolator cables from the isolators down to the charge controllers and also one 6mm twin that feeds from the battery to the DC board. Once I finished running all my wires, I sicker flexed all the coros that go through the sharp metal just so that the coro never moves and everything's all secure so that there's no damage. And finally I finished off running my two 25mm flexes to the battery. Alright guys, I'm pretty sure that I'm finished the electrical wiring now, so I'm going to run you guys through what I've done and hopefully it makes a bit more sense to you. Alright, so we're going to start in the switchboard area. So there's going to be an overhead cabinetry here um, and I'm going to have a DC board here, a little solar isolator breaker here and an AC switchboard over here. So all these cables over here are all my DC. So I've labeled everything. We've got 12 volt back door, light feed, 12 volt outlet kitchen, fridge plus hot plate. So this will be the feed coming up to the DC board from down at the batteries. What else do we have? We've got the two max fans, max air fans, the 12 volt. We got the 12 volt pump underneath and we got the hot water system plus toilet, which are on the same circuit. So that's all my DC circuits. Plus I've also got a 12 volt outlet just over there, which will be near the bed and a light feed just for over there near the bed, there'll be a switch. So that's all the DC wiring, the circuitry. Um, so this is the solar in the middle here. So we've got our incoming from the panels and this is our outgoing out of the load side of the breaker down to the charge controllers. So two cables, one for the 500 watts and one for the 80 watts. Over here I've got my AC side of it. So I've got kitchen GPO, I've got a bed and a safe GPO which will be on this side. They're on the same circuit. Also got my 15 amp inlet coming from down there and that's the, the GPO outlet, so the 10 amp outlet external one down there. Plus I've also got my six mil earth as well. And finally for the AC, which I'll be showing you later in a different episode of the wiring, but this has got to do with the combi inverter and stuff like that. So I'll be showing you how to wire that up in a future episode, but this is just getting the wires in. So that's the switchboard area, separate switchboards, DC, solar and AC. They're all gonna be in separate enclosures. So moving on, this is just for the max air fan up there. That'll be wired into that. You can see I've come through a little bit of coro in here and I've sicker flexed it so it doesn't move. So that, that cable's safe. It's not going to get cut on bird edges. 
So this is just some 12 volt cabling for a light switch and a 12 volt outlet. So there'll be a wall here and that'll come inside the cabinetry and be on the wall here. And this cabling is for the 240 volt power point that will also be on the wall. So I'm gonna have a safe over above the hot water system here and I wanna have a power point inside the safe so that the safe doubles as a place to put my valuables and also like a charging station. So I'm gonna put a 240 volt power point inside the safe. So moving along, um, these cables here, the gray and the black ones, that is for, one is for the hot water system uh, temperature control and the other two gray ones are for the tank gauges. So they weren't long enough to go all the way back to the switchboard. So I'm gonna put them inside the cabinetry in here and they'll just be mounted right there. This twin here is down for the pump as you've seen. So that just goes to the 12 volt pump which is fed over there from the DC switchboard. This cable in here is for a light. So I've got one here, one here. They're on the same circuit and they are switched over from that switch over there, which I'll be talking about in a minute. So I just wanted to have some backdoor lights so that when I've got the doors open and I wanna um, cook in the little barbecue that I'll be putting here, um, I'll have some, you know, light. Speaking of that, I've got a 12 volt outlet here. So a little 12 volt socket outlet and these two Cat6 data cables are for a future reversing camera, which is gonna go down here. Moving on, this is just a, a little 12 volt light that'll be going like that. So there'll be one, two, and there'll be three. So there'll be three lights on one switch and they'll also be controlled from those wires over there. This is roughly where the fridge is gonna be going. There'll be a bench across the fridge, there'll be a sink and a cooktop. And I wanted uh, a power point above bench so i've got a 240 volt power point there and i've got a 12 volt socket outlet just there to pick from the two also in the kitchen i've got the fridge circuit and the hot plate just for the igniter so i ran them on the same circuit because the igniter for the hot plate doesn't take much power at all and that will get wired into this little compressor here for the fridge so you can see how the wires run in the cavity here and then they pop out here. There'll be overhead cabinetries um, above the kitchen and then it will stop around about here. So to enclose all this above the door, I'm gonna have like a little bulkhead, like a timber bulkhead. So basically a cavity where these wires can run. There'll be a switch here, like a little architrave switch and that will be to switch the lights on the overhead cabinetry here so that I have lighting uh, on the bench. There's also another light here, which is like an entry door light, just by itself. It's also controlled from this switch location here. This is my other Max Air fan uh, connection, which goes back to the board. I've also got a shower light wire running in here and also a shower fan and for an exhaust fan. So you can see they all run up. They'll be in the bulkhead and then they come down here in the wall cavity and the switch position will be about there. So at this switch, it's controlling the three times down lights, the one times entry light, the shower light, the shower fan, and also the two times back door lights. So there's five separate switches that will be on the one plate just here. So you can see these other bigger cables that I've run here. They are 25 mil XLPE flex. So I've ran two of them because positive and negative and they hook up to your battery, which you saw me run to before. And they run all the way back through the bulkhead, down here, through that coro, the big one there, through there, across here, down here, and they come to here. And that will get hooked up to my DC to DC charge unit so that I can charge my batteries while I'm driving from my alternator. And here's the other side of those cables and that's the feed that goes from down here at the batteries to my DC board. So that's feeding all my DC stuff. And here's your other two solar cables that were up the top. So they will go into my solar charge controllers. And these guys are coming from the AC switchboard and they are coming in and out of the inverter. So when I'm off the grid, I'm not actually gonna be connected to 
the ground or earth. So the type of inverter I'm getting has a neutral to ground relay, which basically allows the circuit breakers to trip in a fault current. So that's why I've got this earth to the vehicle, which is earthing the entire vehicle. So you can see that I've ran all the AC cabling, the 240 volt in 100% Coro. This is a necessity. It all has to be completely enclosed along its entire run. As for the 12 volt, it's not as crucial. It's only extra low voltage, so this is not as crucial. I've ran it everywhere where I can in Coro because especially through like, especially through the metal holes so that it's protected, but it's not as crucial. But yeah, guys, that's it for episode nine of the electrical rough in. I hope the information in this video has helped you. And I just wanted to keep the electrical in this van, you know, pretty simple. So I didn't go overboard. I just did what I need. And I think that's gonna be enough for what I want. And I just wanna recap that at the start of the video, I said that I don't recommend to do the 240 volt wiring, but I wanna to add to that that it's actually illegal in Australia and New Zealand if you do that and you're not an electrician. So I don't condone that in any way. And this video and this series is literally just for educational purposes. So just use your common sense and don't do something that's out of your field or out of your comfort zone because it's just not worth it putting yourself or other people at risk. But in saying that, I hope this helped you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so this is episode nine. In the next episode, in episode 10, I'm hoping to get a start on the cabinetry and shooting these walls and building all the cabinetry and stuff like that. So getting closer to the end of the year, I really want this done before the end of the year so that I can move into it ASAP. Another thing I just wanna say is that if you're planning to do a build like this, just don't underestimate how much work and mental energy it actually takes. Like to build this from scratch, and to figure out everything yourself takes so much effort. So don't be discouraged, but just be realistic about how much it's gonna take. Another thing is don't be too hard on yourself because just like it's my first time doing this, and if it's your first time or second, you're gonna make mistakes. So just learn from them, build from them as you go, and don't beat yourself up about it because you know, everything is a lesson in life. Also, just to clear it up with you guys, that when I drop a video, that is where I'm up to from that release date. So I haven't finished this van and I'm not withholding videos and all that. Like literally what you see is where I'm up to because I've got to go to work Monday to Friday, sometimes on the weekends. And the only time I get to do this is after work in the afternoons or on the weekends. So trying to juggle this with life as well it's pretty full on, so just be patient. I'm trying to get it done for me and to help you guys, and we'll get through it together. All right, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Catch you later. Check.